All right, folks, we're back. I uh, confiscated this Model Y from Tesla Scottsdale. It does have full self-driving and we're going to use it. So the reason I'm making this video is twofold. One, it's the new Quicksilver, so we'll be able to see that in the light. I'll share my opinion and you can take that for what it's worth. Quite frankly, it's worth a lot. And then also, the other part of this is the financing on these is essentially free money right now. 0.99% financing through the end of May on Tesla Model Ys. That's a really good deal. If you're thinking, oh, should I buy one, all this stuff, this is a really good time to do it. I will break the math down as to why it's a really good deal. Not only is the price of the car the lowest it's ever been, it has the tax credit that's available and 0.99% financing, which is basically unheard of, especially in right now where normal rate is like 6.49% for well-qualified lessees. Look at this guy in his Ferrari. He's broke. You know he's broke. So it's on full self-driving right now. I think they come with a seven or 30 day free trial of this. They've also updated full self-driving to be only $99 a month. So it's to $8,000 to, there's a cyber truck over there next to a Hummer EV and a G-Wagon, that's hilarious. The cool thing about full self-driving right now is they've lowered the price to $99 a month, which I think is worth it to try out. And then the other thing they've done is they've reduced the price from $12,000 on full self-driving to $8,000. Now, my issue with full self-driving is not that the technology is bad or anything, it's that Tesla does not value it when you trade your car in. The amount of people I've heard that have purchased full self-driving, they go to turn in their Tesla, and Tesla gives you $0 for full self-driving, or very little. And it's like, that should be a license that I feel like travels with the account holder. Now, Tesla has done it in the past where they let you transfer your full self-driving license. I feel like if they're serious about that, they should let owners do that. Maybe like a Microsoft license up to five devices or something. They need to figure out something and stick to it because the changing around really upsets a lot of their most loyal customers who bought a product that is still not complete. But it is impressive and for $99 a month, I think that's worth it. Now, the build quality on this, I have a 2020 Model Y. It's just driving me along here. Everything on the interior feels tighter. The big difference is the fact that the sound deadening is better. There's carpeting in the door cards. They've done other sound deadening around the car. The glass here, it's double paned glass with a sound deadening layer in it, which my 2020 Model Y does not have. Now they did that stuff years ago and they've continued to improve that and all of those minor adjustments have made a really big improvement. The other thing we need to talk about is the ride quality. I feel that the ride quality has improved most on the performance model. I think that's where the biggest adjustments came. But overall, like even at slower speeds is where you can tell, this has the 19 inch Gemini wheels. How is the speed limit 25 on this road? We're not gonna do that. It just feels very solid. It's more what it needs to be. So that's really nice. This is the black interior, obviously solid. It'll be nice when they don't have this wood paneling anymore. Personally, I think white is the way to go because this wood is not good. I do have a company that I recommend. It's called Fusion Motorsports and they make a matte carbon fiber dash. Real carbon uses OEM parts. I'll have them linked in the description. But as you can see here, it's a really nice OEM looking piece and they use OEM parts, but they have a carbon fiber inlay that looks really nice, has a good finish to it. Now, the crazy part to me is, you know, these cars cost what, 40 grand or whatever, and they don't come with these little trays. That's like an upgrade. That's kind of that's kind of stupid, but overall the processor's quicker. Since getting my 2020, everything in here, it's minor updates. They all add up kind of a nice refresh, but the real refresh on this, the Juniper model that everyone is talking about, I think that could be 2026 when it pops up. I, I, I don't think it's coming like anytime soon. People seem to think it's coming this year. If you compare how they made the changes with the Tesla Model 3, that took like seven years or something like that. So I don't know why everyone thinks they would revamp the Model Y so quickly, unless they're gonna do it quicker because it's their most popular model worldwide. So hopefully they do, because it needs it to keep separating itself from the pack. It also needs to do it because EVs are becoming less popular. I think Tesla's in a different realm as opposed to other EVs, because a lot of these companies created EVs that I call compliance cars. A lot of dealerships are like, hey, we're not moving our electric vehicles. Maybe they are in California, but they're not across the US and it's a huge problem to have that inventory just sitting there. So the dealers are pushing back on the manufacturers saying like, look, no one's buying these. Whereas I think Tesla 
need to continue to improve their product to make the product so good that people aren't buying it because it's an electric car. They're buying it because it's the best value for their money. So that's what I think needs to happen. But we've done enough talking in here. We're going to go to a park over here, take a look at the exterior of the car, see what Quicksilver looks like, and talk about the math of getting it at 0.99 compared to 6.49. This is also worth pointing out here. It does have the self park feature. So it lets you choose, choose from any car in the aisle. Um, so it lets you choose this here. Of course, there's a car behind us and it will self park the car. Sorry, look at this car. Sorry, my car is hammered. So yeah, it lets you pick any spot in the aisle and go national and go like a pro right into the parking spot. Well feel like an amateur. I mean, we're driving like a 16 year old right now, but it does have the self park feature that we are currently using. And if you hate parking, I mean, this is great. I think it can parallel park and all that stuff. So again, another nice feature of these vehicles that's included in the full self driving software, not the autopilot that they all come with. All right, so here's an exterior look at Quicksilver. It's almost like protein powder, they should have called it. It's not like a Mercedes silver. It's like a little cloudier than that. So I, I think it's a sharp looking color. But again, my problem with their colors is they're, you're paying $2,000 for this. It's just silver and like they're red. I feel like their pricing of the colors is a little too much. I feel like it should max out at $1,000 maybe. But overall, I'm really excited that another color is here. We have Quicksilver finally. So this is kind of what it looks like on the outside. Got these Pirelli all season tires. So these have uh, Pirelli noise canceling of some sort inside of them. So it's Pirelli tire on this one. And again, this is the long range model. Kind of interesting here. They didn't even have a chance to like wash this yet. It only has 300 miles on it. It has the sticky stuff all over the B pillar there. So the color, I mean, it, it does look really sharp. I think it's a sharp looking car. Again, 310 miles of range with these 19 inch wheels and then 292 miles of range with the black induction wheels. These ride really well. You get great efficiency. The trade off is the black wheels look better and you get a little bit better steering response and those a little bit more sporty of a feel but this is definitely the way to go if you're worried about ride quality and then you can change out those wheel covers to like a black if you want if you just don't like the look of it so overall yeah good looking color just wanted to show you that so now let's talk about the math so here's the crazy part if you did a 60 month loan on this vehicle right here, $47,990 at a 6.49% interest rate, which is currently a low rate for people that have good credit purchasing a vehicle, over the life of a 60 month term, so five years, you're gonna pay $7,499 in interest. Now, a lot of people don't look at that number, but that's money that's going out of your pocket that you're never going to get back. Now, if you do that same term, but you change the interest rate to 0.99%, which is what it is through the end of May, the interest you pay on this car is just over $1,000. So you can see why I'm saying it's free money because then you can add in the gas savings and really make a difference in owning this vehicle. So if you're on the border of purchasing one of these right now, now is a really good time to do it. They have a ton of inventory. They've kind of perfected it over the years and they're essentially giving you a free loan. Just jumped back in my Model Y. Again, it's a 2020. Keep in mind, I have the unplugged performance luxury suspension in this, along with their dual rate lowering springs and the rear camber arms. Camber arms just make your tires sit more flush. There's a little bit negative camber. That gives you the adjustability to get that out and give you more even tire wear. So jumping back in mind, I wanted to give you my impressions even though I do have that other aftermarket suspension, the ride quality with the aftermarket suspension is actually very comparable. I mean, it, it feels really good. The car is like a hair louder, and I do have the Tesla OEM tires on this currently. There's a Porsche Cayenne GT. That's awesome. I do have the OEM tires on this thing, so it's, it's very comparable. Ride quality is good. The, the real difference is, the processor and the screen, everything happens just a little bit quicker and there's a little bit less latency. It's just a little snappier. But overall, I want to get it because I could make more YouTube videos with the refresh and, and the upgrades and full self-driving. The only reason I'm considering it is because I make YouTube videos, not because, and the low interest rate, that, that too. But if it weren't for the low interest rate, 
if it weren't for the YouTube videos, I would not be upgrading this because I'm happy with it still. So that's great. That's great news, all of the updates over time. Look at that thing. Jeez. $200,000 Porsche Cayenne. God bless Scottsdale, huh? Lady smoking a cigarette in a G-Wagon. She was on the pole last night and she's in the G-Wagon today. So judge her all you want, but she's doing well. So yeah, I hope that was a helpful video if you're shopping for these, kind of looking at the breakdown of why the interest rate is so good and the features on the car. Yeah, Tesla employee just told me, and uh, you know, take this for what it's worth. I Honestly, I don't think anyone has any clue, but my understanding is that March 25th, 2025 is when they are launching the new Model Y. I don't know if that's true at all, but it could be. So. That's the information I can give you in this video. I hope it was valuable. I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, but if you don't, who cares? Now, if you're concerned about taking your Tesla Model Y on a road trip, click this video right here. I drove mine from Arizona to Pennsylvania. I've done it multiple times. If you wanna see what a road trip is like in a Tesla Model Y, that video will be helpful.